War games and think tanks. That's the name of the game. War, that's the name of the game. That's the scheme. That's an ideal dream. War games and think tanks. Getting paid to think. Getting paid to scheme. My name is Alex. I'm your host for the Corporate Cowboys podcast, A Little Proof of Life. Today is Friday, April 29, 2022. And the theme of today's episode is war games and think tanks. They're very popular. Well, in certain circles. They're very popular. You may or may not be a part of one, depending on how you live your life, how you strategize the people you associate with, what uh, conversations take place, and, and the topic of them. Professionally, business is war. You know this. Shit, I know this. That's just corporate cowboy shit. Business is war. Business is always personal. And so strategizing to uh, corner markets, to... uh, to ob- obtain what well, what's the term I'm looking for? I'm looking for a specific term. You know, cuz I'm trying to make analogies. I'm trying to to make connections between war and business. You know, it's only natural because the podcast is themed as a corporate cowboy, but if you're trying to uh corner a market, target a demographic, if you're trying to subvert a company even, I mean, you're going to have to go all out. All is fair in business and war. That means infiltrating. That means researching, obviously, because just on, on the strength that war is an art and the art of war requires that you know what you're doing even if you don't know what the outcome will be. Even if you don't know what the final product will look like, you can at least envision it. And in doing so, you've got to research. You've got to know the lay of the land. You've got to know what your enemy is capable of. You have to be aware of what resources lie where. So you could either take advantage of them or uh, recruit them as assets. Business is war. And few people actually carry on with business as if it were a war. I think uh, folks confuse Folks confuse war with uh, with a battle, right? In the end, obviously, you would like <coughs> you would like to be the last standing. But realistically, in order to expand a business, you've got to learn to shake hands, right? So this idea of war games, this idea of employing think tanks in order to strategize, in order to better strategize how to uh, conquer, how to defeat rivals, I feel it's misguided. It's misguided in the sense that business requires uh, agreement, also that business requires some compromise. Notice how I don't say sacrifice. You're you're already making that investment in time, energy, money, talent. You're already making that investment. It's not a sacrifice. What you're going to compromise on, (laughs) funny enough, 
is responsibility, is accountability. And in compromising, that's where you build trust. That's where you develop trust. That's where you develop business relationships. Because business might be war, but at the end of the day, you've got to appreciate the intelligence, the, the tact, the methods, the techniques of those you think are in your opposition, of your quote-unquote enemies. You've got, you've got to appreciate, you, have, you must learn to appreciate diversity, right? And I don't mean tolerate or, or, or accept it, right? But you have to be able to appreciate roll with the punches and go with the flow. Appreciating means assessing it, evaluating it, and then using it for something constructive. Using it and incorporating it. What do you think an appreciator does? They incorporate their findings, right? If they're appreciating a, a, a house or some other uh, immobile asset, land, a, a factory, machinery, heavy machinery. If they're appreciating it, they're incorporating their findings and then formulating a professional opinion on it. And what you must do as a professional, a consummate professional, a corporate cowboy, is appreciate the differences between yourself and the people you meet. You see, I'm not even going to regard them as enemies. Business is war. Now, the underlying notion of that is that anyone who is not with you is against you. But it's not immediately, it's not on site. You'll figure that out as you go along. If you've been on the street, you know what on site means. It's, you see a motherfucker, you're clicking at a motherfucker. <laughs> but in corporate, I feel like in professional circles, if you aren't already enemies, and in some instances, even if you are quote unquote enemies, even if they are the quote unquote competition, there is always opportunity to discover common ground, to shake hands, to build something productive, to create a future focused channel for, for, for profit. I mean, <laughs> ultimately that's the goal. Business is war, but what do you expect at the end of it? Spoils? Spoils of what kind? You just want to take on the problems of your quote-unquote enemies after you vanquish them? Because those motherfuckers don't have only assets. They have assets and liabilities. And, and if you leave a trail of liabilities sooner or later, those liabilities will catch up to you. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. You can only rename your entity so many times. You only live so many years. And then your successors themselves might not be on the same page, may not hold the same ideals that you did. So if you're plotting and planning, think of it as a game, as a war game. <laughs> and the objective is to shake hands. The objective is to break bread together. The objective is not just to survive, not just to overcome, but to thrive. And to do that, it's easier to shake hands and outsource some of that responsibility. That's, I mean, that's compromise for a, a, a corporate cowboy, a workaholic, 
a consummate professional who really enjoys getting intimate with the work. That is compromise. But in the name of efficacy, being efficient, being effective, you must shake hands. Don't isolate yourself. It's easy. That's easy. Remove yourself from a scene. Isolate yourself. Go into the uh, proverbial hyperbolic time chamber and just put in work by yourself. Develop yourself as a professional without the assistance of anyone else. And you will get sharp. But if you have no external influences, you won't necessarily fit in. I mean, you'll, you'll cut fabric. You, you'll cut the fabric of space and time. But uh, it's going to look too clean. Uh, I, I don't know if I said that right. It's going to look too clean. It's going to look too, uh, too polished. It's going to stand out. It's going to stand out. And I'm not saying that you have to, you know, slum it with degenerates and participate in debauchery 24-7 in order to fit in with the scene. But you still want to make your appearances. You still want to be seen. So your reputation... So, so people think of you. So people think of your crew and the reputation it carries when they are also playing war games and when they are also having conversations, having discussions in think tanks within their own circles. And even if it ain't you, it's the idea of you, the idea of a corporate cowboy. They must appreciate and incorporate. Because we aren't violent, not yet. Violence is a last resort. Whereas today in corporate, motherfuckers think they can get away with structural violence social iniquities and think they're untouchable because uh, <laughs> they, they're salaried <laughs> they got a fucking they, they, they got a fucking uh, a pension plan they got a 401k and, and, and health care health benefits health insurance motherfucker you better up your coverage <laughs> Oh shit, that's hilarious. <laughs> Motherfuckers better up their coverage. Because I can appreciate, I can appreciate your energy. And if I were to reciprocate that energy, man, you, you might as well tack on life insurance too because your dependents are gonna need that. <laughs> Damn, that's, that's some corporate cowboy shit. <laughs> Again, think tanks, think tanks are more common than you might think. They are more popular than you might think. They, they just aren't promoted. They're not promoted. You may or may not already be a part of one. There might be a think tank within your organization that you might not be a part of. Is that scary? Maybe. Maybe they're considering uh, other... Maybe they're considering issues that don't involve you. Is that a cause for concern? It's possible. Maybe you're on the chopping block, right? As it, as it happens in corporate. Maybe they're considering you for a promotion to incorporate you, to bring you into the fold. Maybe they appreciate your work.
it's not hard to identify think tanks. It's not hard to identify people who are engaging in war games. Some of them might stand out. Some of them appear highly polished, overly polished. Some of them attend, oops, some of them attend functions with an objective in mind. And I've done that before. I've, I've run the gamut of attending social functions, mixers, cocktail hours with the objective of meeting specific individuals, shaking hands and making a connection, incorporating them into my network professionally. And it works. It works. More often than not, it works. But in the name of developing social skills and being a more well-rounded professional when it comes to interacting with diverse populations, you've got to expand. You've got to think that war is ongoing, whether it's cold or hot. And the think tank is indispensable. It's absolutely necessary. You need one. You might already be a part of one because you needed it and you didn't even know it. So grow from there. Expand it. You might have multiple. You never know. You can visit us online. There's an Instagram page. There's a Patreon page. The Corporate Cowboys Podcast. Try to put up uh, episodes every couple of days. At least once a week. But God willing, traffic will pick up. At least on our side. There will be more content uploaded. Maybe more uh, more structured episodes. Perhaps interviews with certain individuals. We might bring uh, AR back, Alex back. And we'll see where we go from there. Have yourselves a nice weekend. Keep your steel sharp and oiled down. (laughs) 